And next up, we have Dr. Jane Kennedy from the London Borough of Newham. Thank you. Um, thanks for inviting me, Gavin. Um, I'm going to talk about the data warehouse um, BI programme we've got in Newham, which is fairly unique, I think, in it's fair to say, in local government. Um, but if I first say, what's this about? We had, um, before we set up the data warehouse, 30 uh, different systems in the borough that didn't integrate, um, didn't speak to each other, and it was very hard to make either operational or strategic decisions um, relating to the data we held. We've created, um, over the course of some time, a single view of people, um, all the events about um, individuals um, that operate, that link into the council information, and um, we've got a single view of property, a single view of uh, children within the school, and we're creating a single view of our business sector. And that's not only operationally effective, but we're, we're, we employ a range of um, data science techniques, machine learning, predictive analytics, I'll come on to talk about. We've achieved quite a, um, a number of operational savings as a result of our um, operational linkage of our data. But we've also got post-doctor post data, data scientists in my team who operate, as I say, uh, statistics and machine learning. That isn't particularly helpful for a frontline officer. So what we've done is taken that, used um, a surface redesign process to say, what, what is the as is, what is the to be, and then work together with the service to drive out efficiency in the process and to develop applications such as the one on the screen to embed those applications into the surface systems so that frontline officers can make better informed decisions. This, this example it was actually about our homelessness prevention service, actually enabled people to say whether we owed a duty or not um, to people coming in through our homeless service and to provide more targeted prevention information to those people um, that came forward earlier. In terms of benefits we've seen, we've included a, a significant number of benefits, both in terms of the immediate benefits, so that working on data quality within the organisation was actually fundamental to uh, linking the data and making sure that the data was actually going to be usable and, and efficient and effective. Um, so we've identified um, significant data errors as a result of doing that. We've detected fraud, um, particularly in single person discount, I'll come back on to talk about that. Also housing, um, subletting, um, parking, um, blue badge um, fraud. We've made better operational decisions because we now understand, so the surface, um, as an example, a housing surface can now look at data regarding the tenant to identify whether they are not paying their rent or um, because they um, are, have financial decision problems. They're not paying their rent because they have mental health problems, for example. So they can really can get in and support um, the tenant in a way that we couldn't do operationally otherwise. We've also used it for better strategic decision making. So, for example, um, we've restructured our looked after children service um, triage as a result of doing this and saved half a million pounds in the process. And we've achieved resource efficiencies. But we're now we're looking at cost avoidance. So we're looking at transformational um, business savings. We're looking at income generation, particularly council tax and, and business rates. And we're helping the services themselves to make um, to meet their statutory obligations uh, more effectively and efficiently, particularly, as I say, around children's services, but increasingly shifting that approach into looking at adults as well. And we've increased outcomes for residents in the process. Analytical views. I wanted to give you um, a few brief examples. They're not the only examples, but I wanted to talk about some of them. So in single person discount fraud, for example, in the first run of the model, we resulted in identifying 1,300 cases of fraudulent use of single person discount. That's resulted in our, our locking down those accounts and people now paying um, increasing uh, rates of council tax. We've also identified an, an additional 1,300 as a result of doing that again this year. Um, so we continue to operate that process. We've identified 158 homes that were 
um, empty, um, which were deemed to be empty but were not. Um, so we've identified um, 158 um, uh, areas to identify new homes bonus and we've identified and we're starting very early days but we're starting to look at business rates and we've identified 19 significant businesses one of which was Tesco um, working in the area that were not paying business rates so we've taken it forward now to, to start in thinking about how we operationalize that more effectively and make sure people actually are paying um, the rates and contributing to income within the borough we've also identified freedom pass fraud uh, where people have either died and their relatives are continuing to use their freedom passes, um, but that generally leads to um, enforcement issues in other areas like enforcement parking, antisocial behaviours, and that's leading to us to think about who those people are and why. I think for me, though, the most important and most interesting examples are around what we're doing on artificial intelligence and embedding that into machine learning moving forward. So as a result, we've got um, a borough-wide PRS licensing scheme. When we started that scheme, we had um, a significant problem in identifying um, licensed properties. We've reduced that from 50% error rate to 3% error rate. We've identified an, an additional annual increase in council tax from that scheme of 700K. And we've identified 152 properties that were being sublet, which are now back in the system while reducing staff costs by 150k. And we've also identified over 3,500 properties, um, we reduced, sorry, um, temporary accommodation by 3,500 properties. Again, a significant cost for the council. Um, so that's what we're doing currently. What we'd like to do it actually is to do more business weight because some of you are civil servants, I'd make a plea to say we'd actually like civil service data um, in the data warehouse that applies to, to new residents as well. It would be fantastic to get more partner level data from a national, national team. We have some police data uh, and the ambition is to work with um, East London Discovery to actually link in public health data as well. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, we think we're quite unusual and I'm happy to take questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Jane was actually our first speaker from uh, local government, so uh, thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, so we've got a question here. Have we got any other questions for the first round? We've got another one here and another one there as well, so that's three to get us started. Hi, I'm Julie Pierce from the Food Standards Agency, um, and so my question um, is whether or not you've been using um, food information related to business um, that are operating in the food sector and if I can have a second question if not um, whether you'd like to and work work with us to explore that use case yeah um, we'll just take the other two okay. questions as well quickly uh, yeah Chris Allen from from ACAS um, yeah, I would just it'd be interesting to know to, to what extent the residents are aware of this. Is this a visible thing? Yeah. And, on, on, and if it is, to what extent you can uh, demonstrate that it's also for their good? I presume it's not just for catching people out. So, Thank you. And the third question is just back there. Hi, uh, Helen Graham, also a Food Standards Agency, but a non-food related question. Um, <laughs> you've mentioned a number of interesting uh, data products that you've built. Um, to what extent have these been developed in the open? Do you have a GitHub um, repo that you, you put things on? How, how, does, how does it work? Thanks. Okay, so I'll take the first one first because that's the easiest. Um, no, we haven't got any food information in there at the moment apart from trading standards information. And yes, we'd um, love to work with you around um, that. Thank you. Um, second question. Um, we, yes, we do have a data processing um, information on our website, so um, residents have to click now to agree and, uh, and consent um, to us holding that information and to using that information in that way. We probably don't do enough of that. Um, linking into um, Simon's earlier question actually around um, governance and resident participation, um, we need to be doing more. Um, and we need to be making it clearer to residents what's in it for them. 
Um, I think that's increasingly difficult to do, but it's certainly something the mayor and members are really inc increasingly asking us and challenging us to do, particularly around the use of open, open data and, and, and self-reporting by, by residents. Um, very much actually in, in ADAS's world, we're currently doing a piece of work looking at um, adult um, care packages. Um, and that's really about the outcomes and, and, and trying to enable residents to stay in their own homes for longer and get supported earlier stage. So it's about prevention. Um, and the looked after children one was also about how can we better support um, children earlier and work with their parents earlier in the process to stop them from becoming um, child protection cases in, in the future. So yeah, a lot of them are uh, now. Um, shifting, now we've done the easy, quick win, fraudulent stuff, we're now shifting into the outcome-related work. Um, sorry, remind me. Oh, um, no, um, but you know that that is something we could we, we could be looking at. We do share, so other councils that are working on these kinds of projects, so can we share information um, and share 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 coding? It's um, quite so, but but it's not on any particular external platform at the moment. Great, thank you. Uh, next set of questions. Uh, so we've got two down here and one there as well. You. In what must be a really rich plethora of opportunity, how do you decide where to focus your effort? <laughs> yeah, Hartley Miller again. Um, it, it's a perennial problem to get different departments in a departmentalised organisation to um, observe the same quality of data collection. Yes. Um, have you found some magic way of actually doing that and reconciling? I wish I had. Uh, Luke Stamber, civil servant. Um, what challenges have you found when trying to match identities across multiple data sets and how did you overcome them? Um, so focusing on effort, um, the initial focus on our programme was around cost saving. Um, it was very much linked to our transformation um, programme and it was about the big ticket items, um, but also some of the small things like the fraudulent stuff where we can identify and run it on a either quarterly or monthly basis to actually say, can we start driving out some cost? The bigger issues now are coming out through um, the surface transformation, actually. So directors coming to us to say, actually, we want to reduce the numbers of older people getting intensive care packages because actually it's better for them um, to not need them. So can you work with us to identify who those people might be in the future and then how we can actually use the data to um, prevent, to do some early prevention um, work. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, data quality is a massive issue for us. Um, we've had to do a lot of data quality training. Um, we've, we've introduced corporate um, mandatory training for on, on, on data quality, fairly low level, but I think it's, we need to stop. Um, there wasn't a culture of data quality within the organisation, if I'm being really honest. Um, it's better in some services than others, um, but we also need to create um, data quality standards. So I think anything uh, we can do um, to improve our standards um, and to encourage frontline users to know how important it is to implement data is, is a real challenge for us. Uh, one of the other challenges actually was about data governance um, and our, our single view of people. Um, we had a lot of conversation with senior leaders and, and, and um, also our members to try and to, to come up with a, a, a ladder of, of governance to lock down um, protected data so those people actually needed it. Um, so that was one of the challenges. One of the other challenges obviously was about data quality. In Newham, we've got 220 spoken languages, so you can imagine the complexity of name matching. We had um, a commercial um, product that didn't work for us, so, um, so we had some developers in who built um, our a, a data matching software um, using probabilistic um, matching um, with 22 different rules. Um, I haven't got time to go into, um, thankfully, it's a bit technical. Um, but that's actually significantly improved our, our gold matching records, but it still actually spends an awful lot of time saying, is this the same person? Um, so, but we have got people, we have got someone in the team who, who does that on a, on a very regular basis. Um, but that's 
we're implementing that on a machine learning model, so actually improving the data matching system as, as, it's, as it's used. Great. I think we've got time for literally one more question, if anybody has a burning desire to ask one. Otherwise, I'll subject you to one. Um, there's been a lot of talk recently about the new sort of London Office of Technology and Innovation and sort of London boroughs working together. I wonder if, if you're working with any boroughs on any particular projects at the moment and how that kind of works. Um, when we're not. We, we talk to um, Lottie uh, quite often, um, to the GLA. Um, at the moment, the projects they're looking at, we've already done. Um, and the models that they built, we've already got. Um, so there is an added benefit of doing that at the moment. We have bought into it um, um, because we do see the value of, of working together, particularly around actually um, children, um, because a lot of children are transient within especially East London. Um, so we don't have all the information relating to the child before they come into the borough. Um, so there's definitely um, a real good uh, opportunity to work across London, but we just haven't followed it up quite yet. Great. Well, Jane, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.